Oh, hey, it's Wes. So, you want to be a photographer. There are tips and tricks all over the place. Lots of things you can learn about, can master. I want to give you five tips that you might not have heard already, that you should know, that you should be thinking about. Things that you will learn in the real world, or you should learn. Anyway, let's get right into it. Tip number one, familiarity with your gear. So having the latest and greatest full framist A1, D6, whatever, R5 camera, yeah, that can help you. It can make your life easier if you have good autofocus and good image quality with your big wide aperture lenses. But at the end of the day, what can be more important than that is just being familiar with your gear. If you have a new lens or a new camera and you go to a photo shoot and you don't know where all the buttons are, if you haven't set up all the shortcuts to your liking, then you're going to make mistakes. Things are going to take longer and aren't going to go as well as they normally would. And it's not just about customizing your gear and getting it ready and knowing where the buttons are. It's also about intuitively learning those things, about muscle memory and reflex. So if with your gear, whether it's manual focus, whether it's autofocus, whether it's cheap or expensive, if you can operate it without even thinking about operating it, if you can just be focusing on taking your pictures, if you can be focusing on your subjects and just getting the shot right, you are going to take much better pictures than if you had more expensive gear. Because being distracted by the intricacies and the buttons and the settings, that will throw you off your game. It will make you take worse pictures. It will make you take longer to get those pictures. Yes, knowing about shutter speed and aperture and manual control, very important. You hear about that all the time though, but you don't just need to know about that stuff. You need to be able to do it intuitively. Get used to your gear. Don't just cycle through and constantly change things. If you have more than one camera body, it can also be important that they have the same systems. So if you have multiple brands, I hate to uh, create a brand talk here though, it's best to stick with one just so that you can become so familiar with it. So. We've got that, number one down. Number two, seeing light. In many ways, this can be the hardest tip in this whole set. What does it mean to see light? I mean, we all see light. So we always have the conversation, or even let's say the war between artificial light and natural light photography. They're both great, let's face it, they're both light. But if you can't see light, especially intuitively, then you're still not going to take a good picture. Now this is something that you don't just learn overnight. It's not just something that clicks, although from time to time it can feel like it's just clicking. This is something that you have to spend your life learning and practicing and growing in just to see how light falls on a face or falls on an object. This is something that takes a long time to not just be able to see, but to be able to see intuitively to know it when you see it. This honestly comes naturally to very few people. It didn't come naturally to me. I'm always still working at it, but I can see it now. Once you do see it though, a word of warning, it is hard to unsee it. So you'll be going through everyday life and you will suddenly be stopped because you have noticed that the simplest of things have been made beautiful by the way that light is falling on it, whether it be a face or an inanimate object or a house or a cat. You never know, something will grab you because you're seeing the way that light falls on it. And that can create interest and beauty and focus and composition. Sure, learning about composition is very important. Again, that is another very obvious thing, but to see the light and to get used to knowing how light passes around and focuses and creates the angularity and the texture on objects in various different ways and different circumstances, that is also just as important and something that takes a long time to learn. Moving on to number three, we're gonna flip things up a bit here from the airy fairy stuff to the practical digital redundancy. Oh, this one bugs me so much as a, a tech nerd by trade. 
If you're doing photos professionally especially, but even with your own memories, it is so important to have redundancy. Now this goes from not just having a camera that has more than one card slot, that is important. I'm sorry if I just started a fight there. But once you get those photos home, you need to have them in more than one place at least. Now, I don't want to get into the intricacies of how you achieve this. There are lots of places that you can find that. I just want to talk about how important this is. A lot of people will say, oh, but I've never had this happen to me. I've never had a card fail or blah, 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 blah. Eventually, statistically speaking, if you take enough photos over time, you will have a failure. I've had cards fail, I've had hard drives fail, I've had computers fail, I've had lightning strikes in the middle of a backup, if you want to see a video on that. I have a video about that. Terrifying. Nothing that I did. A lot of these things are completely outside of your control. As careful as you want to be, there is always something that can go wrong. Please take all the steps that you can to keep those pictures and memories safe. Especially if you're working as a professional photographer and someone is paying you to capture and preserve their memories. Number four, it's all about connection. This one's hard for me as a big introvert. Connecting with your clients, connecting with your subjects is incredibly important in all areas of photography that involve people. And this is especially a thing if you're working with everyday human beings. So if you're having headshots, it's important that the people feel comfortable and at ease so that they can generate natural expressions, whether they're happy expressions or serious expressions, it's still important that they are comfortable in the situation. At weddings and family photos, it's important that they trust you, that they know you're going to produce good results and they don't have to worry about it, they can just live their lives. Even candid and documentary photojournalistic photography, it's important that they are comfortable being around you so that they can go about their business and be honest with themselves and create those honest moments. This is a big thing and it's hard to achieve and it takes a long time to learn. Now, some people, especially extroverts who are very kind and open and warm people, that can be easier for them to achieve. As an introvert, it's something that I still struggle with and constantly work with. Number five, and this carries on from number four, a good model can be just as important or more important than the photographer. That's right, I said it. And going back to number four, this is because a good model can I hate to say fake because it comes from a place of intentionality. They can fake being comfortable, being happy, being at ease, being anything in front of the camera because they know what they're doing. They have practiced it and they are aware of their face and their bodies and their situations. And so they can create those things without all the preamble of uh, creating a rapport and a conscious connection. Now, I don't mean that we shouldn't have a rapport and a conscious connection with models. Of course we should. We should always be kind and we should always try to get along with each other and work well with each other and be collaborative with one another. But a mediocre photographer with a good experienced model can take fantastic photos. Because models can be so good, they can be aware of point number two. They can know about light. They can know where their best sides are, where the light's coming from, where the right angles are. Even if the photographer doesn't, they can sometimes have that covered and create much better images than the photographer themselves could do on their own. Now, a good photographer with a good model, they can bang out amazing photography very fast because they're both working at the height of their fields. It's amazing how easy it can be. Photographers, and this is a huge beef of mine, can often try to put themselves up on a pedestal and try to take all the credit for stuff. But once you're up to a high enough point in an industry, in a field, and you're working with skilled, experienced models, experienced talent, honestly, a lot of the work that you have to do is lifted off of your shoulders. Because they know what they're doing, you don't have to spend so much time thinking about the situation and the arrangement. Obviously that's still a part of your job and something you have to be aware of, but they can do so much of the heavy lifting and they can create so much better photos, so much better imagery if you let them and if you trust them. 
and if you're willing to maybe show a little bit of humility. Speaking of that, if you're a new photographer, it can be very eye-opening to work with an experienced model if you are willing to give up a little bit of your hubris and to be humble because there is so much that they can teach you, not just photographers, but models can teach you so much if they know what they're doing. So it doesn't hurt to hire someone who knows what they're doing, to have a photo shoot with them, and to really pay attention and to be open-minded and to learn from them. Because in a lot of photographic industries, they are a half of that equation. It's not just us, it's also them. Now, generally speaking, this can extend to all sorts of photography, whether weddings or family or portraiture and so forth. The subject can definitely make your job a lot easier, but specifically talking about models for that. So there you have it. Those are five tips and tricks, whatever you want to call them, that people often don't talk about, but can still be very important to photography and growing as a photographer. If you have any other tips and tricks, let me know down in the comments below. If you have any questions about these, let me know down there. I'm always hanging out. Maybe I'll make another one of these videos later on. So until next time, Keep on learning. Let's go take some photos. <laughs>